Shetland, 
When they discovered the oil, they charged a tax to take each barrel ashore. And every wee village in Shetland has a swimming pool. So coupled with that model, I would like to see that our local communities directly benefit from this vast energy resources that we have. We can be world leaders in sustainable delivery in this field. We live in an area, I know that not everyone's a fan of re renewable, we live in an area of incredible natural beauty. So of course we have to balance between planning and development and protecting our landscape. But do you know what? I think that with consultation and care we can manage that. If we want our young folk to have the opportunity to stay here, as well as jobs, we are going to need houses. We've got quite a lot of empty land across the Highlands and Islands, and yet lots of our people struggle to buy a plot. We've got some communities where over half the housing stock is owned by second homeowners. So land reform and community empowerment, as Gail mentioned, are going to be absolutely key. All of our communities need a mix of people to thrive. And we need to ensure that we have housing to meet everyone's needs. Healthcare. We all heard the report from Audit Scotland last week. It sounded like fairly tough news for the Scottish Government. But then it so the NHS is facing huge challenges. But you know what? Here in the Highlands, we've led the way before. We set up the Highlands and Islands Medical Services 35 years before the NHS was set up. And you know what? We even had air ambulances way back in the 1930s. So fast forward to today, all over the world, <coughs> everyone in the world is facing this challenge of an aging demographic and rising costs of treatments. Not everyone in the world lives in a city. So in much of the world, they face the same challenge as we do in providing healthcare in remote and rural settings. Now these pressures provide an opportunity for us to innovate and lead the world. Here in the Highlands, we have projects underway to develop housing with modern technology to monitor the health and well-being of the person in the house. And that type of housing is going to allow older people to stay at home for longer or to stay in their communities for longer without going into institutional care. If we can crack that here in the Highlands, the rest of the world will follow us. And not only will we have a solution for the people living here, but we will have an idea that's marketable to the rest of the world, which is what Scotland's always done. So let me see, finish by saying, changing Scotland. I'm saying Scotland's pretty good already. <laughs> let me finish on the topic of changing Scotland. Make no mistake, as Mary says, Scotland is changing. The simple fact that I am standing here tonight with the potential to become an MSP is a sign that we are changing. The simple fact that there's a room full of people here tonight at an old-fashioned town hall political meeting is a sign that Scotland is changing. Here we all are imagining a better Scotland. The simple fact that we have a Westminster MP in Dr Paul Monaghan who is here engaging with his constituents is a sign of a changing <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> because in contrast to his predecessor, who didn't even have an office here in the constituency, Paul is very much our man in London, not London's man in the North. Finally, another, the last sign I'll leave you with of a changing Scotland. I've come up here tonight with my 15-year-old daughter, Rowan who is eager to meet her heroine, who is a politician called Mary Black, <laughs> a young woman who was elected to Parliament when she was a 20-year-old student and yet has admired the world over for her intelligence and her principles. We are changing in Scotland and all of us here tonight are already 
being the change that we want to see in a future Scotland. Thank you.